Kind of an interesting, fun story here, guys. I just saw that Tesla vehicles, I'm watching a video and I'm thinking, those cars don't have a driver in them. And they're going on a pretty long journey. It's about one mile. I think it's well nearly two kilometers this trip. And all these Tesla vehicles, they're driving themselves out of the factory and basically onto the ships, essentially. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. And I want to say a big thank you to all our Patreon supporters and YouTube members. You really helped this channel to happen and be a thing and to get you know, seven, seven to 10 million views a month over the last few months. So thank you so much. Now, I should point out, guys, I don't think that this, this feature is something that will be exclusive to Tesla. I think within a few years, we're going to see quite a lot of manufacturers where their cars will be driving around like this, right? Loading themselves onto ships. Humans won't be needed. Now, this here is, it, it looks like it wouldn't make that huge, massive of a, of a difference to have these cars drive themselves. But I actually thought about it. If you had a person having to drive every one of these cars, that would cost literally millions of dollars. I think these Tesla cars being able to drive themselves is saving Tesla millions of dollars just in production costs, delivery costs, essentially. Ever pressing on the bleeding edge of technology, even if Tesla is kind of not that popular right now with a lot of people, um, Tesla cars have been seen driving themselves from the end of the production line in the factory to the loading docks. And that's a long trip. That's 1.2 miles. So that's about two kilometers. And it's without humans in the cars at all. Now, yes, this is a closed circuit. Uh, there's no real obstacles to go around or anything like that. But this is saving Tesla a huge amount of money. And I think this is one of the reasons why we're going to see cars become even cheaper. Tesla is saying that this year, they're going to have cheaper cars. Within the next few months, they're going to have cheaper cars as the options you can buy. That's a good thing, I think. It'll bring prices of... it'll. Really, it's going to force other companies to bring their prices down again. This is what happens all the time, doesn't it? This is good for consumers. So Tesla actually has shown in a pair of videos the new process, and I think it's I think it's kind of impressive. The cars are starting at a supercharger station where humans appear to pop into the car to begin the automated driving process. But as far as I can tell, that wouldn't actually be necessary, I would have thought. From there, though, the driver gets back out and presumably he moves on to the next car, double checks it, checks that everything's good, and it's ready to go, and then the car drives off to the docks. One video begins by showing a shot that includes these workers with at least six Teslas that are all moving and merging without humans behind the wheel at all. Now, as the video continues, you can see there are cars that stretch as far as the camera lens can see. There is oh, hundreds of cars, I believe, in this video. Countless cars without humans in them line up and select various loading dock parking spaces. So it looks like these Tesla vehicles are actually putting themselves in different parking spots and kind of deciding where they should park based on the options and choices that are available. Now, my Xpeng G6 can do that, but I do have to pick the spot. So I look on the map on my screen in my car and it shows you all the different parking spots available and you can, you can actually press which spot you want the car to park itself in. But these Teslas are all clearly doing that out of their own choice. They're doing that themselves, kind of identifying a spot and moving there if that spot is suitable. This isn't really a super simple straightaway these cars are taking from point A to point B. It's not just a straight road. They're actually navigating several intersections within the grounds, other cars with drivers are in them, um, and there is heavy equipment moving around. So the cars actually do have a bit of work. There is, I mean, not just one straight road with nothing on it. In addition, there appears that um, there's at least one section of the road that is too narrow for the car, two cars to pass at a time. So the Tesla vehicles actually have to wait for one car to go through, one car to decide, yeah, I'll go first, you go second, and they wait for each other and work out who should go first. Sort of like humans do in that situation, which is a bit of a, sometimes a little bit of a stressful situation you can find yourself in. Like when you see a bridge and it's a narrow bridge, you come around a corner and there's another car on that bridge, you're like, oh shit, I've got to stop. I've got to wait to let them get through or no, I should go because I got here first and they're after me. You've got to kind of make a, a judgment call. Tesla claims in a posting on X on Twitter that it is one step closer to large scale unsupervised full self-driving. Now, obviously this is not unsupervised full self-driving at all, but I do think Tesla will achieve that within the next 12 months. BMW recently made news by using its own autonomous tech to enable cars to drive themselves down and out of the production line. But that was a bit different, in fact, quite different to this. Those cars aren't navigating what these Teslas are doing, um, and it's doing and it's working through a completely different method. 
So the BMW system is, is very different to this. This is a bit more, in fact, this is quite a lot more complicated. Now, of course, um, these are not public roads, but I'm still impressed by these cars doing this. It's kind of um, a vision of the future. I think this won't just be Tesla, like I said. I do think there'll be quite a lot of car companies doing this before 2030, which will help bring down the cost of cars. Yeah, you know, it will mean less jobs for people to do mundane things like drive vehicles from one end of the factory to another and navigate this and drive them onto the dock. Pretty mundane job. But I think it will reduce the cost of manufacturing. I mean, even on production lines in factories, much more automation is happening now. Cars have gotten cheaper, guys. I know we all think that they haven't because the media is telling us all this nonsense all the time. But if you include the cost of inflation, cars have gotten better and cheaper significantly versus what they were 20 or 30 years ago. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Suddenly it appears that electric car sales are, well, electric cars themselves are flying off the shelves in the United States. In other words, people are buying them in really big numbers. We haven't yet seen the data from December or January, of course, but I believe we're going we're gonna to see a huge increase in EV sales. Now, of course, there's the fear in the United States that Trump will remove EV subsidies and therefore electric car sales will crash. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but what are your thoughts? Do you think that will? By the way, these were the best-selling EV brands and models of 2024 in America. This model way was again America's favorite electric car. They're on sale right now. Big discount on Tesla Model Ys on inventory stock, both in Australia, in the United States, in China. You get some good discounts. Should you get one at a discount uh, instead of the new version? No, don't. Don't do that. Get the new one. It's worth paying a bit more for. That's what I think anyway. Or buy an XPG6 like I have. Now, Tesla, Mercedes and Volkswagen electric car sales were all lower in 2024 versus 2023. Crazy, especially when you consider the fact that EV sales actually grew by 25% worldwide in 2024. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us, as I mentioned before. I have an XPG6, and if you want to see my long-term review of that vehicle, it's on the channel. I've now done, I think, more than 5,000. You have. I've done more than 5,000 kilometers of driving. Lots of different terrain. I've driven on dirt. Uh, driven on some mud, even. Amazing, right? I've driven on snow. Uh, I've driven on uh, highways, I've driven through mountains, I'm talking some pretty decent mountains, you know, pretty big elevation changes. So I'll put a link in the description to that review. The EV market in the United States might not be growing as fast as automakers predicted, as I thought it would, but it's still growing. New figures published show sales of electric cars in the US hit 1.3 million last year, up 7.3% versus 2023, when 1.2 million were, were registered. 